call the meeting to order. If you would please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing as Dr. Steve Harris, the Reverend up at Ridgecrest Baptist Church, please. Let's pray together. Our Father, what a joy it is to be here tonight uh, with this group of folk that are concerned about their community. Certainly there are a lot of decisions that are made in this room and wisdom needs to be here to make that uh, those decisions and that wisdom comes from on high. Solomon tells us all wisdom comes from you. We're so glad tonight that this uh, town of Black Mountain is, still believes that uh, God can lead them in their decisions they need to make. So I pray tonight for your presence. I pray for your leadership and guidance. I pray for continuity. I pray for unity. I pray for each one to express their ideas and their thoughts. And I pray it be done in a mannerly way and in a loving way and a caring way. And one that would be prosperous and produce for the king, uh, the town of Black Mountain and for the people that are a part of this great little town. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Dr. Harris. Um, we don't have any proclamations right now. I do have. I do want to share with you a couple things. I uh, don't know whether you all saw in the Asheville paper, uh, there was an article in there under the living section called Black Mountain Rocks, which I think is quite a unique thing. You've got a, a lady and her, and her uh, daughter that have gone ahead, uh, Christine Lucas and Gene Chapman have gone ahead and painted all these rocks and just placed them around town. I, I, just, I just think it's just a wonderful thing. So if you get a chance, this, this may be in the Black Mountain News. Will this be in the Black Mountain News, Chris? It ran in the Black Mountain News. Yeah. Oh, there it's already done. Was, okay. yeah, they, did, they did both. They did both. Good. So. Mayor, Mayor? Yeah, go ahead. I, I will say that I left, uh, I have my contribution to Black Mountain Rocks. I put it in my inbox for Angela to take a look at tomorrow morning, and it's a little bit larger than some of the rocks, but I think it's shaped like the state of North Carolina. Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also, too, there was a wonderful place yesterday up at the uh, White Horse. Uh, it was about Rebecca Boone, uh, Love is a Home. And so uh, I went to see it. Uh, I went to see it primarily because my wife uh, is a Brian from down on the eastern part of the state. And if we go back six generations, uh, her great, 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 great grandfather was a brother to Rebecca Boone. So I thought that was an interesting little segue into that. But it was a wonderful play. Must have been 160, 170, 70 people there. So it was, uh, anyway, the White Horse does a good, does a good job. In lieu of a, uh, I've had several people ask me to make a proclamation about the events that have happened on a national level, about the climate, us withdrawing from the uh, Climate Accord in Paris. I've talked to several board members. Um, proclamations are, are, are wonderful things, and we try to keep them so they're very special. But we want to do them in where we can recognize someone locally. That's, this is out of our purview. But I do want to take just a minute or two to share with you what we are doing. That is what the town of Black Mountain is doing. And I think that going ahead and giving a proclamation while that is fine, I think actually stepping up at the plate and doing something, something that this board here I'm very proud of, to be a part of, has been doing for years. The Greenway system, the Greenway system, while not, while not complete, we're working on it. That there will reduce the amount of time that people spend in their cars. It'll help for, the, for the overall, their overall health. When you look at the community garden, uh, the community garden is, is teaching folks to, to grow food for themselves, not that they will be able to be able to sustain themselves, but I think that is a wonderful experience, especially with the way that we're now teaching the children uh, and getting them involved in that, in that particular program. The lighting, the lighting, uh, and Matt has overseen this, street lights around, around town. Uh, we basically will cut our uh, power bill, what, in half? By, by, by a third at least. By a third yeah. in that. When you begin to look at, at, the, at the renovations that were done to this building here, um, also to what we've been doing out at Carver Center. 
the Carver Center bill for heating that thing was around $23,000 a couple, three years ago. We've got that thing down now at about $12,000. So that right there shows that we could give a proclamation, but this board has decided to do something about it. And I think that if all towns were to follow that kind of a leadership, we'd be much, much, much better off. All right, we'll now start with citizen comment. Uh, Susan Catherine? Coffin, yes. excuse me. Please come right on up to the microphone. Yeah. Give your name and address, Mr. Mayor. If I, mean, if I might, because I, I notice on the uh, on the on the comments that some of these are listed, which I understand um, as You're right. as rezoning issues, which is fine. But we do it, that is a public hearing, and so that might be better suited. First of all, get more time. Yeah, that, I, I should have mentioned that. Yours is about White Pine Drive. Yes. Okay. You want me to wait? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, as a matter of fact, well, everybody on here has uh, has been has been speaking, maybe except for the mayor of, of uh, there's a couple, Robin there's a couple. Josephs. Okay, yes. Okay. Uh, so, if you would, we will be having that in half hour or so. Robin Josephs, 29B West Keesler Street. When I moved to West Keesler, I had a steep but perfectly safe road to drive up. In December, the road was torn apart by Black Mountain bungalows to put in a sewer. Um, I was denied access to my home for several weeks, except for a few hours a day. And the road is unsafe. It's unsafe for my car. It's ruining my tires. This morning, Ms. Bonnie Monroe, who lives at the bottom of my street, one of the elders of our town told me twice she was unable to get up the street. She only has to go 50 feet. It's all this loose gravel. There's now a, like a utility hole cover that has been cracked because the trucks are driving over onto the people's properties because they don't want to drive up the street. It's got a big hole in it. It's unsafe to walk. And I don't understand why I am having to pay for Black Mountain Bungalow's personal gain. The last I heard, he's not going to build until possibly late fall and has no interest in doing anything um, to make the road safer for me or the other citizens on our street. So I know y'all are listening. I know the maintenance guys have come and they've band-aided, but every time it rains or a big truck, I've got a couple of ruts that I could go swimming in. It might be nice in the warm weather, but it's really an unsafe road right now. And I don't want to be driving up and down that road again, having to get new tires and another alignment um, again before Black Mountain Bungalow decides to do something about this road. Thanks very much. Matt, would you please look into this? And As a matter of fact, just, yeah. just, for, just so Robin knows, I do have a meeting tomorrow morning with the owner of Black Mountain Bungalow, um, and, then, and, and we'll take a look at, uh, at, at, at that issue. Yeah, because when I met with him back in, the, back in the winter, I was asking him when, we're gonna go, when he was going to go ahead and take care of this, and he said he wanted to go ahead and get the, the water line in, and then he would pave it. Right. Well, that's six months ago. And he hasn't put the water line in, but I think he's got another project that he's that uh, that has moved. But I think there's still the road issue is still an issue. So we have a meeting tomorrow to discuss that. Okay, if you please let the board know what, no, what, what comes of that. And I'll, I'll, I'll let Joseph and Robert, please. Okay. Okay, uh, now we got a communication with the boards. Andrew Wagner, please, from Urban Fox. How's everyone doing? Um, the Urban Forestry Board in town has been uh, busy this last year uh, promoting the iTree map that Buncombe County has been and the city of Asheville started. And uh, the committee over the last year got together and we input all of the trees from the Town Square project um, to help that program calculate the carbon sequestered by those trees and the pollution offsets by those trees. And so that's a project that we're going to try to continue doing, um, or the board's going to continue doing over the next year, to try to take all of the common areas that the town owns, any easements and whatnot. We uh, asked Jamie for a map of the town-owned properties around town 
and we're going to be putting together volunteer days to try to get folks to collect that data on what trees are growing there and use them in that system to try to give the town some data on the benefits of the tree canopy here in town. Um, and in addition to that, we'll be continuing Arbor Day. You know, we were able to, over the last couple of years, we were able to get back our Tree City USA status, and we want to maintain that uh, by having you all continue to produce the proclamation every year of us being a Tree City USA, and, uh, and we have it hold the Arbor Day celebration, plant some plant trees, and then Laurel and Jamie have been doing a lot of work to keep track of how much money the town is spending so that we maintain that per capita uh, spending to maintain that Tree City USA status. Um, we also are going to continue working with Public Works to um, recommend replacement trees that are beneficial to the town whenever they redo sidewalks. Uh, we improved over the last year the characteristics of the tree wells where the trees are planted. Uh, Jamie's now putting in larger wells with pervious surface covering them so we can maintain our ADA compliance on sidewalks while also having a larger tree pit. Um, that's going to help in sidewalk areas where there's a narrower corridor. Um, and so those are all things that we did over the last year. This coming year, um, you know, we would like to start doing outreach at the tailgate market to recruit volunteers uh, for both the committee and then also for these volunteer projects in putting tree data into iTree, um, as well as um, asking the community for their input as to what they think we could do to improve um, the, the tree canopy around town and, um, and work more with builders to help save some of the more mature veteran trees. Um, at, in the past, we've been part of things like the, um, the Beautification Committee's plant sale at the Monta Vista, and we've given out educational materials um, that we purchased several years ago that we're still giving out brochures from treesaregood.org that teach people how to select an arborist to prune their trees properly, how to plant trees properly, um, and the dangers of topping and a lot of those issues that are reoccurring. Um, one thing though that is going to be potentially difficult this coming year is um, we were directed to meet less frequently than we have been over uh, the, in the past we meet monthly. Um, I'm not sure where the direction came from, but apparently we're only going to be meeting every quarter going forward. Um, I'm not aware of where that direction came from or why, um, but the committee's prepared to make it easier for the town for us to have our meetings, maybe even take our own minutes and do whatever we can take to continue meeting as regularly as we've been meeting. I don't, I don't know if you all have any insight into that um, or not. Because um, we were actually interested in asking for permission to bring on more members because a lot of the projects that we would like to take on may involve <coughs> needing to break into subcommittees and with a five member board it's not really, there's just not enough people to break into subcommittees, you know, we all end up wearing a lot of hats. So um, I wanted to, wanted to bring that up with you all. But aside from that, um, you know, those are fairly the goals that we've been moving towards and working on. So, well, good. I appreciate your questions. time on that and all the effort that you put in. But to answer the question, do you, can you answer his? Well, is, it, it, is it because we were just going to provide a stenographer there or someone to take the minutes every quarter? Is that what it was? Well, there's some different. I think I think in your at, and we talked about this at the at the agenda meeting. But I think some of your some of your uh, um, um, ordinances for your for your boards and commissions at, at next month's meeting we were going to make some changes to some of one of them one of them was to consider consider uh, um, different scheduling for different commissions but but obviously if uh, if the um, at, and at the time we, we thought it might be shorthanded for, I, I'll be honest with you Andrew we thought we were going to be shorthanded for uh, for urban forestry um, we've actually had some more interest um, in the last the last little bit that's kind of bulked it back up so that uh, 
so that the board is uh, a little more operational. Is, is, is there more interest than just the three that signed up? Did, would they, no, did not, more, no not more than that, but, the, okay. but, but, that, but that was at least enough to keep it as a, as a functioning um, okay. A functioning commission. Yeah, because you got three vacancies coming up on right. the on the board, and we do right. have three folks tonight that would be. And I think I think at the time, Andrew, we had, we were concerned that we might be we might be we might be shorthanded even with with those three, and so so then we were looking at trying to to find a way to facilitate a smaller group over time. But yeah. if there's but but if there's interest in a bigger group, we, we're willing to accommodate that. I think our and and, and I would reach out to the uh, to the public who. Um, may be interested in the Urban Forestry Commission and uh, and and, and the, the services they provide and the the expertise that they uh, that they bring back to the town, um, so that we so that we can make it make it a, a, a more robust um, commission than it than it uh, than it is currently. Although they're very committed to committed to the cause, I think like Andrew said, the numbers don't lend themselves to having um, um Subcommittees and, and and branching off into different groups, and I think that was our that was our concern. We were just trying to accommodate what the uh, what the what the demand was for our Urban Forestry Commission and what the uh, um, what what we were what we were able to accommodate. It may be that one of the things you may need to model a little bit after beautification and the fact that you know hey, you don't need to be a member to come to come and just come and maybe encourage and then bring that back to us next summer when we're you know talking about the vacancies and then see then if there's a reason to bump up the membership we could do that yeah i, I know at least from my experience with a lot of arborists you know uh, procrastination can be a problem and yeah. so um I, I know of several folks that were worried that they may have missed the deadline and so that was another question that we may have is is there an ability to prolong the um, application process well i think the application process need to have a distinct um, beginning and an ending so people are clear right. on, on where that is but as vacancies occur or as demand occurs I think we, we want to we want to encourage people to be involved and so if there's an opportunity um, to 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 work with urban forestry to make that to make that broader then I don't I, I certainly I don't want to speak for the board but I don't think the board would want to uh, rule people out that were interested in participating okay but I do, but I do think that, that the that the window the window of time is important um, right. to us too. Absolutely. Well, we'll try to we're going to continue on what we've been doing and uh, try to see if we can get some more attendance, um, you know, just public comment attendance, and um, let's see where we go from there. One last thing uh, on the Woolly Delgid. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> overall, when we looked at when they first started invading this years ago. It looked like that it was, I'd heard and read about somebody that said it's, it's kind of like a wave and that it was coming through and once, right. once it got through. But I've been noticing some, some it, hemlocks in my yard that seem to be getting, they seem to be coming back on. There's, a, there's going to be, for the foreseeable future, a population that lives here all the time. Um, and so you can, if you treat your trees every three years, you'll be maintaining a concentration of the pesticide in the tree that will prevent populations from springing up on the tree. There may be localized branches that are devoid of, of the treatment, just hap -hap, you know, happenstance, and uh, they may get it. Um, one thing that uh, in the future I think that's going to be more important for the town than the woolly adelgid because uh, trees that are still living have probably been treated and it's just a matter of continuing to treat them on a regular basis if, if you have hemlocks but the um, emerald ash borer is now in Buncombe County um, actually one there's tr several trees in Swannanoa that you can see from the interstate when you're passing by um, between exit 59 and 55 on the right kind of by Appalachian um, I forget what the name of that landscaping company is but it's just off the interstate um, by Warren Wilson Road and actually several trees on Warren Wilson's campus are partially dead now because of the emerald ash borer and that's a tree where or that's a tree pest where the healthier the tree is the more that pest is likely to attack it um, and, and there's no saving that tree once it is infected so preemptive treatment is extremely important for ash trees um, it's a boring beetle so it's going to it bores into the cambium, uh, and the larvae, the eggs are laid on the bark, the larvae hatch, they bore into the cambium and girdle the tree. 
Um, and it, they, they attack the small foliage first, and then over a period of two years, they will kill the tree. Um, and so, you know, that's something that the town should probably send out notifications for. And that'll be something that we'll be working on, too, with the town. How do we notify folks in the community uh, that emerald ash borer is here? And if they have a tree that is a white ash or a green ash um, or a fringe tree, they need to address it immediately. Well, that may be something that, that, he could, that they could work with the water department on, because now we send out an envelope. Mm -hmm. Correct. For our, you mean for our billing? For our billing. Yes, sir. And so that in that envelope could be put a notification yes. so that you don't, we don't have to worry about spending more money on mailing and that that may be a way. But I'm just saying, yes. there should be something to look at. there's an opportunity to let people know, I, then, then we, should, uh, we should try to reach out to people. Because yeah. 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 I mean, that's a great medium right. for us to be able to get in touch with the... Uh, with most of the folks, because well, a third of us, I'm on the Asheville Water, but a third of us are on the Asheville, Asheville Water, but at least that'd be yeah. two thirds of the citizens. Yeah, this was, this, the Emerald Ash Borer was a pest that people were aware of and scouting for last year, and there was a lot of folks because of there was a lack of urgency. Uh, a lot of arborists, you know, didn't <coughs> jump on recommending treatment because there was still this idea that we had time. And uh, what we're finding out, a lot of these trees that we that many arborists looked at last year are now infested seriously and uh, either need to be removed or need immediate treatment. And this is a pest that's in a lot of areas in the Midwest where ash is more common, it's taken 15 years for this pest to roll through the areas and kill all of the ash trees that weren't treated, uh, just how it spreads slowly. This is not like the woolly adelgid, though, where it will come back periodically, um, it's likely to, to once, if, it's, if the trees are treated every other year, so it's a more, it's a more expensive treatment, it's a more regular treatment, um, then it's likely that the pest will move through the area and uh, kind of extinguish itself, but it's But not. for the most part, treatment is a lot less the removal of the dead tree. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Especially because ash is a very brittle tree species. Um, like maple, once it dies, it loses a lot of its integrity. So what we're running into here is that it's not like a lot of these trees in people's mountain houses and things like that are easy to get to. Uh, there are sometimes not very many options for how to get that thing down safely, um, where you wind up with a tree that's impossible to climb and impossible to get to with machinery that uh, you're just out of luck. Uh, so addressing it early before you realize that you have a dead tree is going to be important as well. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. One last, well, I want to just make a comment to the, to the folks here that over this past decade, uh, and it's been just about a decade, that some of the arborists came to us and recommended that we start treating some of our hemlocks around around town. And during this time, we have probably treated uh, close to, to at least three to four hundred trees. Yeah, uh, Jamie would know that more, but, but I'm higher than that. We do we do a thousand trees yeah. and we treat over three hundred a year. Right, right. thousand wow. trees. Or, yeah. So, and most of these trees are in right of ways. Which what that means then is that the tree is more than likely very close, if not into power lines. Which means then if that tree has to come down and we've got to hire Mr. Wagner here to take them down, you're looking thousand dollars a tree minimum to get them to get them down. So again, the town has been preemptive on this. We saved a lot of trees, helps the environment, but the biggest thing is we've saved the town a lot of money in having to take these trees down. So anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Matt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let's do the consent agenda. You've got the um, adoption of minutes from your um, May 4th agenda session, your May 8th regular session, your May 15th uh, meeting that was a joint meeting with the planning board, and a May 17th. Um, Budget. budget workshop. Oh, that, that actually happened. Then you've got um, uh, a couple of budget amendments, and I'll go through these, and I'll answer any questions as we go through. You've got a budget amendment to increase the uh, water fund capital expenditures um, by seventy-five thousand dollars. 
by appropriating fund balance of the of the water fund, but also by seventy five thousand dollars. And and I think when we had the agenda session, I may not have been as clear as I had had meant to be. So I will I will go back through that. If you'll recall, last uh, January of two thousand and sixteen, we had a pressure reducer valve on Chapel Road at the at the church there fail, and people were out without water for for a handful of days, and we and we worked a long time to get that to get that right, and and the, and the um, that pressure reducer needed to be replaced, and I think the direction of the board and the, and the staff together had said, well, we should replace all three of our pressure reducers that we have uh, in town. We have one at Charmelody Acres and one, um, one I think at, uh, at Country Food Stores where the other one is. So, so we, we had budgeted to replace or had anticipated replacing those, but we didn't get those replaced before. This, this happened in the, 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 the the uh, failure of one happened in January of 2000, maybe the very end of December, but, the, but, the, but January 2016. And we didn't get it done before June 30th of 2016. So it, so it rolled back into the, uh, the fund balance of the, um, of the water fund. And you can see that we had budgeted um, $180,500 last year for capital improvements. We'd only expended $67,000. So, what ended up happening was that money rolled back into the water fund, and now we've made those improvements. We've listed all the eight improvements uh, um, to the system that have happened over the over the fiscal year, but but by and large, what we we only budgeted forty thousand dollars this year for the pressure reducer valves, and we spent one hundred and nineteen thousand dollars. So that is a difference of seventy nine thousand dollars, and and with with the changes that we've already made within the other. Um, line items to make the water fund capital um, line item balance we need 75 a uh, 75 thousand dollar budget amendment all of that is is um, primarily related to the pressure reducers which we um, like I, like I said had anticipated having done uh, last year before the end of that fiscal before the end of the, the uh, 16 fiscal year but we've got them done in this year, and uh, and so that is that is the difference. And so the money from last year rolled back into the water fund, uh, um, uh, the the fund balance for the water fund, and then and then and we're going to expend it now out of the fund balance for the water fund back into the uh, the pressure reducing valves. That is that is what we're asking for this um, this budget amendment. That's a long explanation for a for a for a budget amendment. I'll go to the next one. The next one is. Uh, um, the uh, watershed restoration capital projects fund budget amendment. This basically uh, sets aside our um, our match for um, watershed restoration improvements. If you'll recall, we have a we've we've received a series of grants um, to make uh, improvements uh, for watershed um, for the for water quality in the watershed, and and mostly these improvements right now will focus at the. Um, at the, at the parking lot of the golf course, at the library, and on Church Street, we will make improvements in those three areas. And this and this is to do the budget amendment for our portion of, uh, of fifteen thousand um, dollars towards a grant to uh, um, to make to make those improvements for, for uh, water quality at, in, within the watershed. And we'll and, and we'll continue to do that as we move forward with um, with a variety of other projects. Also, we have a matching fund for the Riverwalk Greenway Capital Projects Fund budget, which is um, $80,000, which we, we've, um, <coughs> we we've received a grant to, uh, and I think the mayor has, has referenced this, this is the mayor's favorite project, and it connects, this connects um, the greenways from uh, Flat Creek to, um, to Veterans Park. This is, the, this is the crossing that has Highway 70 um, Norfolk Southern and number nine. These are the. Um, this is a grant that we received from DOT uh, when Josh Harold was here. Um, he was able to secure that grant, and so we have, uh, um, at the direction of the board, have we set aside eighty thousand dollars a year, which would be our four four hundred thousand dollar match for a two million dollar grant over a five year period, and that this is our match to to uh, for that for that project. And those are your. I'm not sure there's not something else in the in the consent agenda 
Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. No, you're, I know. You're, you're the most important one in there. So the appointment of uh, um, uh, Larry Harris has been appointed as the chair for the Land Sky Regional Council Board of Directors. And because of that, we would uh, request that you appoint an alternate uh, board member. And uh, we would request that you appoint Alderman Maggie Tuttle as the alternate board member for the um, Land Sky Regional Council as as Larry would be the chair and would only would only have a vote in the case of a tie. And actually she'd be replacing Ryan. Well, I'm sorry, I'm replacing Ryan Stone as the as the alternate and I, I didn't make that clear, but she would but Maggie would replace Ryan Stone as the alternate for that for that board. And I and I can't remember Larry how often does that board meet? Monthly. Monthly. So it's a monthly board. Okay. Do I hear a motion to approve the consent agenda? So move. So move. Uh, does anyone wish to remove anything or discuss any of the items? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Now we have citizen comment. This is citizen comment for new business. And as most people have signed up, they've gone ahead and signed up to speak about the rezoning. I would like to make one comment before anyone gets up to speak. Not that they can't speak, but that this this uh, issue tonight that we're going to be hearing, we'll be having a public hearing on it about rezoning uh, the south side of our of our recreation park, right where the fire station is, the greenway, uh, the soccer center, and also the community garden. This is about rezoning that area and that area only. It has nothing to do with anything that will transpire or may or may not transpire in the future as far as buildings. This has only to do with changing that so that it coincides with what's on the other side of the interstate and so that our total park will be under one zone. So having said that, Susan Coffin, if you wish to come up. Is he skipping? Uh, excuse me. Well, only if I may, Mr. Mayor. This is still a public comment session, and this is not the public hearing that's being called on, yeah. the, on the ordinance. Do they want to wait until the public hearing is called? Do you want to do that? Mm -hmm. the, the one well, this was going to be the comments. We set up the second comment period, but this is a new business comment period. It's not the public hearing. So really, well, 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 all sorry. right, so it's not. So they could speak here. They, they can't. Yeah, they the 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 uh, and they can speak on the... Uh, the, yeah, the A, B, or C. Well, or the yeah. yes, A, B, or C is only, and then and then they would go to the well, public hearing. Why we came up with this was the fact that we wanted to make sure that the public had a chance to speak to new business. Yeah. Now it just so happens tonight that all three things in new business are public hearings. No, no, no. New business, new business is actually an ordinance. Well, two well that's right. Two that's ordinances. Right. This, and yeah, the first lease. thing is not, and then so you've got really the lease. Now, if somebody wants and to then you've got those, the, uh, the others. Yes, sir. Um, so, well, what's going to happen here? Uh, well, I will leave it up to the public. You can speak now or you can speak at the public hearing for this particular issue. <laughs> Okay. Nobody wishes to speak now? Okay, fine. Okay, Matt, first order of business. Yes, yeah, so new, under, under new business, Mr. Mayor, you have A, an ordinance to eliminate compensation to the Black Mountain Board of Aldermen and Mayor. You will have in your, in your packet an, uh, an ordinance, as, you're, as you all are aware. We have uh, in the, the budget workshops and the budget process, um, for the upcoming fiscal year, fiscal year 17, uh, or fiscal year 18, fiscal year 17-18, uh, there is no money allocated uh, for compensation for the for the mayor or the board of aldermen, and that money was was reallocated to a, a new position for the public services department that they had requested that that, that, that staff had not uh, had not funded at the time. Um, this this ordinance. According to our charter, and I'll, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, Ron. Our charter says that uh, we you cannot change compensation, um, up or uh, increase or decrease for the existing board. It has to be it's to occur for a future board, or for the board once it expires. And th that's what this ordinance does. This ordinance um, 
eliminates compensation for the Black Mountain Board of Aldermen and Mayor for um, boards as they as they move forward. That, that is an ordinance um, that takes that that takes effect as as your as as your term expires, which I think is 2000, and the total term 2019. So, um, so that is the ordinance that you are considering at this time. Okay. Do I hear a motion? Uh, to adopt uh, 01711 to eliminate compensation from Black Mountain Board of Aldermen and Mayor. So moved. Any discussion? And just to clarify, it, this takes this takes place for setting board members as new terms began or a new persons elected. Yeah, my understanding would be this would take place as yes, well after the final term of the of the sitting board. Which is 2019. The last, the, the last, the last of the sitting board. Two years. It will, yeah. it will take a, pl it will take place after. Right. It will go into effect after that time. And in the meantime, the, the, um, the purpose of the motion that was passed at the budget workshop is being accomplished simply by not funding. Yes. The, you would have, the, and so at next year's. At, You'd have to do the exact same thing. Right, right. Next Just year. so the public's clear. Yes, I beginning, know it's beginning July one, we're not funding um, salaries for elected officials. Yes, sir. That that is what you that's that is that is the direction that uh, you have given us, and that's what is in your um, budget ordinance as it stands now. That's my understanding, Matt. That there's you said 2019, but the three of us will meet that criteria at the end of. 2000, or terms I, 2017. That was my interpretation is the way that, and I've stolen this practice straight out of the charter. It says that prohibits passage of an ordinance changing the amount of salaries paid to the mayor or the board of aldermen, which takes effect during the current terms of office of the members of the board of aldermen. So my opinion, although some of your terms will flip over this coming mm -hmm. fall, the, I, this is written to go into effect after that second election in 2019 after everybody has either been replaced or, or re-elected. Okay, so until then, to accomplish what we're trying to do, then we'll have to zero it out in the budget line item in every budget. If that is the direction of the board, you would have to do that next next year. Right. It'll, the, the, the issue will rise again, yes, sir. And will it rise again in, in 2019? Yeah. Correct. There'll be, there'll be two more times that yes, have to be that have to be done. And um, since we're in discussion period, I will uh, state that I am opposed to this, even though I don't have a vote. Uh, and one of the reasons is that, you know, I mean, an honest men can, women can disagree. Uh, but I think, though, that what we're doing here is, first of all, changing the tradition that's been ever since the town of Black Mountain was formed. Um, and there's a reason for compensation. Compensation is the word, if you define the word compensation, it is you're compensating people. You're compensating people for their expenses, for some of their time. And for the common man and woman, this pretty much eliminates them eliminating unless they want to just give up money for their families. Because you go ahead and you leave work to, and you have to miss work, that's why you have the compensation, is to, is to, is to help is to help cover that expense there. So that is, uh, that is the reason that, that, that I just don't agree with, uh, with, the, uh, with the direction. And if that was the case then, then we should be asking all boards, uh, whether they're all across the state, the county commissioners, legislatures, you know, I mean, there's, you know, to go ahead and give theirs up. But that's, that's the mayor's opinion. Anybody else wish to speak? I would say that I think it's important for board members, not just this board, but encourage future boards too, and Matt can do this easily enough, and Dean, that expense reimbursement is still appropriate. And so when you're doing town business and you have to travel and or, you know, attend a meeting that has a meal charge to it or something, if you're doing town business, that is an appropriate reimbursement, reimbursable expense and should be turning in our you know, about the receipts or whatever they may be to map to process it. And that's my issue for us. Yeah, and it has been. We we do some of that now, even, but you know, more more perhaps more focus on it in the in the future. Mr. Mayor, if I'm allowed, I'd like to read a statement that I have for this. You're right ahead. Um, I have served on this board for seven and a half years. I knew coming into this town charter 
coming into this position that the town charter allowed for the board to be compensated a small yearly salary for its service. Many of my current peers on this board expressed surprise at such a salary upon taking office. I, did, I do not know exactly what the town leaders enacted or why they enacted this establishing this salary for board members, but I do feel that we need that to do so as was as a support for the board members as they went about the business of the town. Now comes a resolution to discontinue the salaries to the board and mayor to help pay for an additional staff position in the town street and maintenance department. While I strongly support, and I want to stress that, while I strongly support this position, I strongly oppose the recommendation to discontinue the salaries to pay for it. The proposed position would be paid next year based upon the board salaries, a one-time event, and as you've already heard, it will have to be voted on yearly. Future funding this position as would be, it involves the depletion of the board salaries. My recommendation is that the board be studied, that the position be studied, and as such create a permanent position on, in the department. Right now there is money in the budget to pay for an additional budget, meaning an additional position in this department. I would much rather have us go from say 10 staff to 11 staff and that be a permanent position now as opposed to doing it every year. To me that just makes plain common sense. We have been constantly reminded by this board of the strong fiscal management of town funds that have allowed us to deplete town debt and increase fund balance. Actions that have allowed us to work with the leaner, to become a leaner and a more citizen friendly budget. In other words, our budget is in a position to easily fund the position. I'm also concerned now to hear my fellow board members to state they are doing their jobs on this board due to the love of the town of Black Mountain. While I don't dispute anyone's love for Black Mountain or being good stewards of town funds, I question the need now after so many years of, you know, it's not the first time we've heard that additional positions have been needed. But all of a sudden now is the push to get this position funded. We're in a better shape budget-wise than we've been in a long time, so we can pay for the position out of the current budget. Hopefully, there, um, hopefully, the, and I can't speak for other uh, aldermen or all the ladies on the board, but I know for me, in the check that I've been receiving, it's very seldom if I use that check on anything other than making anonymous, anonymous donations to charities around town, to different missions around town to help pay for the um, Santa Claus programs at the end of the Christmas time. That is where my check goes to. Again, I am supportive of providing an additional employee to our department. We have the funds in our budget to do it. While I feel that the decision has already been made by my fellow board members, I still feel it's necessary to make my statement. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Anybody else wish to speak? I'll just say one thing. This board, since uh, Maggie and I, uh, we were the first board to stop any kind of uh, increase, the, uh, the normal increase that the town received for the town employees. We refused ours as, as well as the rest of the board for the last six years. This here is something that, that we need to be doing period as a lot of other towns are doing in the state of North Carolina, Albemarle, there's, there's, there's several folks that do that. When Maggie and I were elected, neither one of us knew there was any kind of compensation. We didn't run to try to, to uh, looking forward to the, comp, uh, the uh, compensation. We ran because we cared about this town we thought that the town was in uh, trouble. I think a lot of the rest of the town thought the town was in trouble too. And that's one of the things that Carlos uh, alluded to was the position that this town now is in financial, financially. Is in, we're in good shape. We got there by being good stewards. This too, this motion right here and approving this is going to be good stewards for this whole board and the town. I'd like for a vote, please, unless there's anybody else on our on my motion, please, Mayor. 
Anybody else wish to speak? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Passes three to one. All right. Next, we got an ordinance. Yes, sir. Your next ordinance is um, uh, an ordinance to amend uh, Chapter 20, Article 5, Section 20-23 of your nuisances. This is um, uh, applies to um, grass and uh, overgrown lots, and we have a we currently have an ordinance that limits the height of grass, but it doesn't provide an exemption for agricultural properties. So the um, this proposed amendment allows the exemption of agricultural properties that are used for grain and or hay crops and properties that are fenced for the housing of horses or cattle. Um, it, it, I think it's, you know, it, um, as, as you all have uh, um, been around town, you see areas that you say that the people are, are growing for, uh, for hay or raising for, uh, for, for cattle. That is, that we have, I, I feel like we've been flexible with those with with uh, with those with those issues, but our ordinance does not have an exemption for those issues, and this provides an exemption for uh, for allowing those to, to be grown and and uh, and and uh, and not and not be out of compliance with our existing ordinance. All right, do I hear a motion? So moved. Any discussion of it? Not all in favor. No. Uh, opposed. Unanimous. There. Okay. Approval of the lease renewal for Swanee Valley Montessori School. Yes, sir. So you have a. Um, if you, if the public will recall, we've uh, um, the Swanee Valley Montessori School is currently housed at the Carver Center. They've been there for well, they they were there in the past, but they've been there consistently for the last year. We've made improvements to the uh, facility uh, on on their behalf and with some of their funding, and they have a. Um, a lease that has some uh, um, some additional language for space that they would like to uh, to lease, basically the cafeteria space with some um, some limitations, not limitations, but some some uh, modifications, so that uh, so that there's some shared space there that adds to the uh, to the lease rate. I think it raises it from 2,500 to 3,205 um, a month. It includes additional space there. Um, we this was a one this initial lease was a one-year lease they have requested um, a three I think I've talked to to Katie and uh, um, she uh, three to five years is really what what they would what they would like I know that uh, that Ron has drafted some language that allows um, an out if there's some if there's a if there's a public purpose but I, but I, but I would make a recommendation that you at least extend it for the uh, for the longer Longer time period with the additional space to the to the lease. It's been a great relationship. I think it's a good uh, addition to the Carver Center. Um, we there's additional work to be done to the building. They've been a great a great partner uh, in that regard, and the school is uh, the 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 school has been a, a welcome addition to uh, to the community there. And we've been we've been we've been lucky to have them, and I hope that they feel the same way about uh, being a partner with us. But 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 the lease. The, the point of the lease is that it does include additional space in the cafeteria at an additional rate um, and it includes uh, a longer term than one year and so I would I would request that uh, that you approve the approve the lease for three years at, at a minimum maybe but I think Katie you would maybe I don't want to put you on the spot here but my my discussions have been that uh, maybe up to up to five but certainly longer term I think there's some, some opportunities for them in that regard if if you're comfortable as long as we've life. got an out in case the the town needs the building for something a bona fide you know reason is if we have that out i don't mind doing five years i think they'll need i don't know if they've seen i don't know if they've seen the latest modification so I, so I, the only thing that i would not caution you on is that is that whatever we approve tonight they would they would have to they would obviously need to to uh to see what that what that means but if it but i'm not, I'm not really concerned about the space issue i think that i feel confident that we're that we're on the same page there, but the length of the term, they, what I guess I guess Ron, the best the best way to do this is to, if the board approves a length of term, we would we would we would go to them, we would bring it back to the board. Is that if they if, if they if were there's a difference? If there's uh, a difference, okay. I have prepared a draft that, and I've left it blank on whether this is going to be one, two, three, four, or five year term, uh, and then the language we had before, where after that initial term. Uh, we're willing, if we have no need for it, to negotiate follow-up years. 
uh, the board expressed at the agenda meeting that if we go long term, you know, the what ifs, uh, if this board needs an out in that, whatever that first term is, you set up. And I put in there, and you know, I can find the language, that in the event the, the landlord, that being the town, has a bona fide and de demonstrable need for the space during that five year term, then we've got to give them at least 90 days notice and their lease would end in August or end of July at that point. Uh, outside of that first five years, there's a lesser standard if we need to terminate. If they're in, or five, I'll say five years, say three years. If we're in the fourth or fifth or sixth year, all we need is, is that we need it for a public purpose. It doesn't have to be as pressing to terminate it. But I try to put in language, and they may look at it and want to put, modify that language of, as to how big a need the town has so they can terminate during that first term. Uh, keep in mind that no matter how we structure this, uh, the term you set plus any possible renewals can't exceed nine years. We don't want to get into that situation where it's being treated like a sale. But that's, that language is, is drafted. I don't even know if you call it proposed, but on your termination, which is what Don was interested in, if we get in the middle of this and things change, but I think that's the part they'll probably want to look at the hardest. Uh, sounds like they don't give three, four, or five sounds good. Uh, the right to renew after that, we have a need space, sounds good. What's going to be the hard part to work through is just the language on when the town feels like in the midst of that, they need their, prop their property for a greater purpose. To, to that. Would it be Standard okay then? I mean, they obviously would want to come back. Maybe they may just simply just, she'll take it to her, to her board. Could the board here tonight not pass something, say, three or five years, yes. and then give them the option just to fill that in, and unless they had to come back? Well, it and then, and then it's done, and then they don't need to worry about coming right. back. Well, the if you if this board selects a term, and it goes to them, and they're happy by the next meeting, we're just signing. If it comes back, then Matt can put it back on the agenda next month. We can you, okay. this board can look at any changes they want. But I think it gives them some direction. If you if you pick a term, then I can then we can at least go and say this is you know we're talking about three, four, five, whatever the number is. Then they have a they have, and if they have issues, then they may, then then we can bring those back. But if they don't, then then we're done. Then we're done right? I think we talked about it thoroughly at the agenda meeting, and I think as I recall, we were <coughs> comfortable with with the the three or five year term as long as we had an appropriate. Uh, way to to um, to to get the property back in town use by the town, uh, you know, and, and I think correct. I think this language does it. So I I concur with Don. I'm fine with five. So I mean, I'll make I would make that I would make that I would make that, I would make that, perspective, they need, they I, I would make that motion that we make it a five year term All right. with the yeah. language that you presented to us, Ron. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Unanimous. And just so, and just so I'm clear, if, this, if at this point, y'all know the board has passed it and approved it, this is a proposal you. for the school. Right. right. Yeah. And I think, that, school, yeah. I think that's important. I don't want you all to think that yes. yes. And I think that was the point that I was going to make was that that if if they see if they see the language and they say, well, we have this issue and that issue, then it has to come back. If they don't. Mm -hmm. Then we can we can move this forward. But we can't make them sign it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But this has worked out well for the whole community. There, we have a school that we're helping, but also too, the Carver Center was getting in in, in bad repair, and the programs there we weren't using the building as much, and so this just helps us get that building in great shape. It helps them have a, a facility to teach at. So I think it's a good win-win for the for everyone. Thank you. All right, now I will move to item D: appointment to fill vacancies on town boards and commissions. You have a long list of. Uh, I mean, I'll be glad to walk through it, but but you start with the ABC board, and you have it. And I'll one one applicant, James Hobson. Uh, do I hear? Someone to, to make a motion to nominate. So moved. Okay. Any discussion? If not, all in favor, James? Aye. 
Opposed? Okay. He's appointed. Greenways, we've got two vacancies and we've got four applicants. So, do I hear any nominations? I nominate Amy Parker. Okay. And the way that we'll do this then is that whoever <coughs> receives a positive in a uh, majority vote, the first two would then, would then get the vacancies. However, uh, so Amy's been nominated. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, there's one. We need one more. Nominate Richard Eisel. Eisel? Eisel. Richard Eisel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so those are the two there. That completes the Greenway Commission. One unexpired term. So who was the one that dropped off? Did it? So oh, I'm sorry for a second. Yeah. Gerald. Gerald. Yeah. Oh, Gerald. Okay. All right. So then we need one more. Record. No, one more unexpired term. Mayor, let me let me explain to you. The, there are two more folks that applied for the Greenways Commission but we're scarce on other commissions and so we're trying to i'm thinking that we need to kind of divvy up and and try to cover all the boards as much as as possible so i just make a suggestion that we don't appoint anyone else to the greenways commission and use these last two i've got yeah. them penciled in for other boards that are just as important okay keep in mind mm -hmm. that our, our, our are these folks also on another board? Because we no. can, you can serve on two. No, we, 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 we yeah, never done that on the past. Oh, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Because I serve on my boards. You can serve At on two boards. At the same time. Yeah. 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 You, you, the hands. As long as they're not conflicting boards. Yeah. 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 Well, what about Greenways? Would that be the case then? We can, if y'all want to do that. That was Becky James. I'm sorry, and I, she I said resigned. that. It was Becky James as we stepped off the Greenway Commission. So we That's could. Case, I'm I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay. okay. Carlos nominate Sheridan Hill to fill the unexpired term ending. So does that June. leave All in favor? Drummond. Drummond to fill the other yep. spot? Yeah. I guess there's, that's that's it. Be only, there's only one. There's only one spot left. Yeah, there's only yeah. one spot yeah. left. Yeah. Unexpired term. Yeah. Unexpired term. Oh, of one, oh, one year. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Now, which one are you putting where? Sheridan's going to be an unexpired. Okay. All in favor, Sheridan? Aye. Uh, uh, opposed? Okay. Sheridan, Sheridan gets that. All right. Now we move on. Historic Preservation Commission. We got one application, but it says here applicant does not meet residency requirements. So we have none there, Mayor. Yeah, I would leave that. I just I would leave that. Just leave that. All right. So we will. I think honestly, what the way the way we envision this is that in July we we'll, we have some changes to the uh, to some of the language of the boards of commissions. I think I mentioned that, and that uh, we will have to re-advertise for, okay. for a couple. Sounds of good. That's one of them. Planning board, one vacancy and one unexpired term of one year. Nominate Mike Rains for three year term. For the three year term, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, then we have one left for the one year unexpired term. Okay. I nominate Glenn Telford. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that's done. Recreation Commission, three vacancies with no applications received by advertised due date. Hmm. I, would, I would request that you just leave leave those vacant leave that okay. those positions vacant for now. Very good. Next is urban forestry. Nominate Don Wooten. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. There's one down, two to go. I need another nomination. Nominate Sheridan Hill. All in favor? Aye. And then one last one to fill the bedroom. 
You have a full commission there, Mr. Wanda. And we've got zoning. We've got two alternate vacancies. Current alternates may be pointed. In. And we'll fill one on expired term. Yeah, so the way so the way we do the the uh, board of adjustments is that the, the alternates that currently exist move up and then you appoint into the alternates that are there. So you have to do two steps. I think that's correct. The motions right? are you make, on there. You make the motion mm -hmm. to approve the alternates that are already on the board and then you fill and then you move people into the alternate position. Although you may be running short yeah. alternates now. Just one. So I nominate Rebecca Harris for the regular term ending twenty twenty. All right. All in favor? Nine. Aye. Um, second alternate. Mm -hmm. right. Make the motion to uh, appoint Robert Osmond. Mm -hmm. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. And then the third alternate. We'll, see, we'll move up to the first alternate seat. Mm -hmm. So I nominate uh, Mary Jo mm -hmm. Adams to go to the first alternate seat. Anyway, we're getting. First. Well, we've already gotten two. We only needed two. Yeah, anyway, we we got to now the fill the, the uh, yeah. alternates. You just now that last one filled. It. That last one. Yeah, the last one up to the last one filled. No, filled the last regular seat. Oh, to move into the alternates. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. what Mary Adams just was. That was that motion. She will go from third alternate seat to first alternate. Now you got to find two. Two more alternates. Two more alternates, okay. All right, so Mary Adams to be the first alternate. All right, then. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? And now we've got two more folks who, Sheridan Hill and Jacqueline Drummond, who are applying for mm -hmm. alternate seat two and three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you've appointed Sherry and Hill too. Mm -hmm. That this is her this is you've appointed her. Yeah. So we can't you've appointed her to uh Green yeah. Yeah. Greenway yeah. Commission. That's what I'm saying. She can only serve two. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, yeah, we're gonna be one alternate short. So, so what we'll do we we have to we have guys for historic and recreation, we'll have to advertise for those again or how we're gonna handle those issues. We'll have to advertise for the third alternate. Mm -hmm. I mean well well, they, 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 can't, they can't appoint. They can't they appoint get a third without a second. I mean, I don't, I don't know that. And I'm we like, need to I don't put the second. I don't know. That, I don't know. Share the hill, but. Uh, I didn't I just, try to put my name in there. I just said, well, "Use me where you, you should need have, me." You should have put oh, putting okay. your name in there because uh, we're just going to just keep, they'll just keep putting you on there. So. You All right. Well, let's go ahead and get right here a motion for Sheridan Hill. So no, I think you probably don't want to say that. I don't want to speak for Mr. Adams. I thought it was Jacqueline Drummond. Put in. No. Okay, no. I bet. Yeah. Did we do Jack Jacqueline Drummond on something else? Oh, yeah. She's yeah, but she's but she's on okay. Oh, no, no, no. She's on yeah. one. Right, she can be put on the CBS. Okay. All right. Let's see what we've got our hands on. All right, do I hear a motion for Jacqueline Drummond to be the second alternate? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Okay. And then what we'll do is in July, one short, the third alternate seat is vacant. Well, we advertise for that, and we'll, and we'll open back up for the third alternate for that, plus, I think, historic and recreation. We've got a couple of commissions that are that are short, and we'll and we'll take a look at how we do those in July. All right. All right. Now we get to the public here. Yes, sir. <laughs> Your first public and hearing. I've already had two strikes against me as far as going ahead and getting, and I'm hoping I won't strike out. Here. <laughs> so, well, I don't know. Who, let's. There are people that want to speak this one. So, the public hearing for the text amendments to add parks and open spaces, and indoor and outdoor recreation areas. Yes. So I hear a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. All in favor. Aye. Uh, Does anyone wish to speak to this issue? Text amendments to add parks and open spaces and indoor and outdoor recreation areas. Do you want to say something about this? Josh, Josh is not here. Josh is not here. Let me just, let yeah, me just, just describe just, this, just, this, just this portion of this so that people are aware of this. So currently, 
the land use code does not list parks and open spaces in the table of uses, even though obviously we have um, parks and open spaces. It doesn't define and list indoor or outdoor recreation areas. So this amendment <coughs> adds parks and open spaces, defines and adds indoor and outdoor recreation areas, and provides additional permits for outdoor recreation areas in, the, in a variety of zoning jurisdictions that are um, included here. And I'll just, I mean, even though this will be meaningless to most people, but, but in, in CR1, SR2, DR4, <coughs> UR8, OI6, NMU8, uh, Central Business and Highway Business, uh, Light Industrial and Heavy Industrial. That might be all of them, Jennifer. Is that all our districts? Yes. Okay, then that, I just listed all of our zoning jurisdictions, and that will allow uh, indoor and outdoor recreation uh, and parks in those um, jurisdictions with, with, with requirements, but still, that's what, that's what this portion of the public hearing, or this public hearing, regards. All right. Again, the public hearing is open. He's a, given a little brief synopsis on it. Does anyone wish to speak to that? Well, I have a question. Uh, if, if, if you want to speak, you can come up to the... Okay. All right. Okay. Give your um, name and address, please. Shannon Dickerson, 3 Treetop Place, Black Mountain. Um, on this, we have to rezone 17 White Pine Drive. That's not, that's not how she's No, no, I know, but I think I know what she's getting to because... Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. And that is an access that goes into a town park or public area. That's where the community gardens are. It's an access to the community gardens, to um, uh, the golfing, the Frisbee golf. Uh, walking area, part of our whole park system that you've been so active with. And um, as I understand, this rezoning is a lead-in to change the use of some of that public land that's back there beyond the fire department. And get... so I, I think I perhaps the paper got ahead of what's happening, but... Uh, we all read the paper about how they want to put in some kind of a um, a um, yeah, child not. care center into this yeah. area and make this small little entry road into a big public entry road. And so we're kind of here as neighbors to try to say, let's talk about it and think about it before you start rezoning a street with a bunch of homes on it. Let me just say, what may, you may, you may, well, you mean to go ahead. Okay. Well, all I, all I would say, because I, 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 I think your, I think your issues may be better directed at a different port. Uh, we have a handful of public hearings and so, That's but fine. this one really, the, the goal of this, of this public hearing is to allow um, parks and open space and indoor recreation in the, the zoning jurisdictions that we have. That is, um, over time, we have made text amendments to uh, to try to accommodate different things that we that we have seen that didn't that, that we had left out of our land use code. Why this and that's particular what it is. street? Well, this not it's not this particular. This this is actually not this particular street. This is actually every zoning jurisdiction did not currently allow um, parks and open space, and now and now with this uh, uh, public hearing, the, the debate is. Should should each zoning jurisdiction allow parks and space? So so it's a little now. now that's not you know we have other ish, other public hearings coming up. But but in this one, all what we're doing, not all that we're doing, what we're doing, or what what's being requested is to allow um, parks and open space in um, zoning jurisdictions because and, and I don't have a, an explanation for why it wasn't part of our land use code, but it wasn't. And so what ends up happening is that. That parks are 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 not are are not permitted in zoning jurisdictions. I, I don't want to speak for the, the board or for the public, but I think we're we're pro having parks in uh, in our zoning jurisdictions, and that and that's the reason this language was changed and is being and is being requested to be changed in this in this current issue. So it's just a legal game. 
We yeah. know Lake yeah. Tomahawk's been there for a really long time. Right. In a residential area. Yes. And so forth. Okay. Yes. Right. Gotcha. Exactly right. <laughs> but it went, but it does but it doesn't it, it doesn't have a it doesn't have a uh, uh, it, it, it doesn't have a, a designation in a jurisdiction, and that is, and that is the issue that we're trying to deal with with this particular issue. And, and that's what I have a question about. My name is Sue Coffin, Seven Tree Top Place, Black Mountain. I just wanted a clarification on that <coughs> ordinance when it says that recreation services outdoor would allow for outdoor recreation, which could include accessory uses such as snack bars, pro shops, clubhouses which are designed and intended primarily for the use of patrons of the principal recreational use. Could you clarify that for I think that what, what, what they're trying to, uh, to get at there is to cover all of the, uh, the uses that we currently have um, with, our, with our outdoor recreation, which includes um, open space parks, uh, active parks, and the golf course is included as part of that. And so that is, that is what we're trying to, to uh, um, accommodate with the, with with uh, with this amendment to to allow that in the jurisdiction that they're in i don't uh i don't want to speak for the board that there's an opportunity for additional golf courses which is really what what the things you just listed kind of applied to but golf. For, but but there is disc golf but i think snack bars so are things could they apply to have them. a snack bar at the disc golf course if well under um i know I, I think under i think that that would be that would be considered part of an outdoor of, of outdoor recreation. Then yes, they, they yes that that would be that would be considered an addition that, that would be included in this. Yes. May I have a question? Yes. On page four or five, and we're going to talk the, the on five point two three, and it's you know it it is these descriptive descriptions of of. Recreation services outdoor, mm -hmm. chain link fence, similar materials if used. They just say they have to be used if used, if used. Yeah. Outdoor lighting if used. It's it's not. There's no requirements there. It's just if if it's used, it has to comply with. And that's what I was speaking of earlier, where there are some there are some restrictions. It doesn't just mean that everything can, that everything that you declare a park becomes a park. If there are if you if there are things that you want to do, there are some there could be. But there's a have to be, but there could be some uh, some other conditions put on that, and these and these are ones. So you can see that there'll be um, there might be might have to be the out, outdoor lighting, the uh, uh, fencing, hours of operation. Those are issues that you that you might have to address yeah. if you were to if you were if you were to create a new you know a new piece of property. I mean, or create a new park on a new piece of property. All right, the public hearing is still open. If someone wishes to come up and speak. Not time. No, it's not time. But another public hearing. That's right. You're getting I'm Pam King. I live at 715 Laurel Avenue. I serve on the Black Mountain Greenway Commission. And um, I'd like to share um, a statement that we discussed as a commission, and I'm speaking on behalf of the commission at this point. Regard Would this be for the rezoning of the Park. Yeah, it's not about the other. It's not about the um, child care center. But is it? Okay. But, but is it about the rezoning or about? Yeah, about the. About it's the about the, the land, rezoning. About yeah, the if you, you could hold that for the. We've got two more. Public it's a pretty. Now. It's a pretty broad statement. Yeah. I don't think it's. Well, if she wants to speak, go ahead. Go ahead. We just wanted to say that um, we want to be assured that there will be continue. There will continue whatever you decide to do with this property. There, will, there continue to be safe connectivity between the gar Garden Greenway and Blue Ridge Road. This could have an effect on future Greenway connections. So the Garden Greenway was constructed with state funds under the Recreational Trails Program. Any effects which this pro any project has on the Greenway need to be mitigated. This Greenway will need to maintain its current mileage and ADA compliance. Non-compliance has the potential to lessen our chances of obtaining funding in the future. We hope to be included in the planning phases of any project in order to ensure that the integrity of our greenway system is maintained. That's it. Very good. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak?
I'm Lee Redding, 211 North Park Lane. Um, I too am going to make a broader statement addressing this uh, issue uh, in the context that I, I um, urge our town staff and government officials to um, consider the most um, restrictive zoning possible to address our town greenways, parks, public lands, steep slope lands. Uh, it seems like uh, this um, innocent approach to get uniform zoning from the north side of I-40 Veterans Park and the south side um, has the potential, I think many of us share this concern that we're kind of opening Pandora's box. If you, if you make this industrial business commercial, then the, the town could be um, open to uh, considering the most attractive offer sometime in the future. For those of us who are most concerned about preserving, protecting, and expanding recreational space, green space, open space, it, it, I urge you to consider a more restrictive zoning approach so that we have a legal basis to stand behind when attractive proposals are presented to you in the future. Anyone else? I'm Sheridan Hill. I heard my name a lot tonight. Um, I live on Laurel. Yeah, I live on Laurel Lane in Black Mountain. And um, just very briefly, prior to this meeting, I met with or had phone calls to seven of the key players involved in this development, involved in what will follow the rezoning of White Pine from TR4 to Office Industrial. And I'm just, I just please let me say, with all due respect, Mr. Settlemeyer, my understanding in reading the zoning ordinance code is that what White Pine is being rezoned to is from TR6, traditional residential six units per acre, to Office and Industrial. And that, that's a topic that doesn't seem to be, I'm, I'm just very confused because I have met with people who already have, it just seems a disservice to the people, to, tr to, to the citizens of the town to try to pigeonhole this into, this is this little thing right here. But you know, looking into my eyes, what is really coming down the pike and it should all be part of a comprehensive plan that follows the town's comprehensive plan, which is to preserve small town characteristics as much as possible. That's my comment. Thanks. Anybody else? Is this, which, which? We're, we're just doing the public hearing. <laughs> you do want to speak about rezoning. So and that will be, that'll, this is the first public hearing and that'll be the third public hearing. Okay. All right. So I don't see anybody else wishing to speak. Do I hear a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. All right. Public hearing is closed. So now I need a motion to adopt Ordinance 01705 as presented. I would just remind the board that, that, that this ordinance allows open space and parks in the jurisdictions that, that we have defined. In. Motion to accept. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to adopt the statement of consistency as presented. So moved. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Now we go to the second public here. Yes, sir. And that, we're going to give it, how do we do this? Please, yeah, give, give let, let the public know exactly what this is. Okay. So in this, pub, in this public hearing, mm -hmm. This is a text amendment regarding appeals and variances and the requirements for publishing um, information in that regard. So the North Carolina general statutes um, do not require that notification for appeals and variances be published in a newspaper, but our land use, land use code does <coughs> require us to publish a legal notice for variance and appeals. Um, we have um, appeals and variances uh, basically affect the property owner and everyone that has legal standing which are those within a 
a buffer area and we have a buffer area of 200 feet in which all property owners are notified by mail the property is posted and the, the requirement of publishing in the newspaper um, has caused delays in the way in the way we handle this and so we'd like to make our our, uh, our publication requirements consistent with general statutes and that's really what this public hearing is about okay do I have a motion to open up the public hearing so moved. all in favor Aye. Aye. all right anyone wish to speak to this public hearing this issue of text amendments appeals and variances not seeing anyone rushing up do I hear a motion to close the public hearing <coughs> So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to adopt the ordinance, 017-6. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now we need a uh, motion to adopt a statement of consistency. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That's the second public hearing. Now we got the third public hearing, which is a public hearing to rezone 17 White Pine Drive from TR4 to 06 Office Institutional. And before we do that, I just want to ask a question. Maybe this would be something Mr. Sneaky helped me with here. We just passed in public hearing one, or A, to add parks and open spaces and indoor and outdoor recreational activities to TR4, which is what that area on White Pine Drive is. I'm beginning to wonder now why why do we need this under there? No, I can't answer system? that part of the question. <laughs> but I can tell you that the earlier ordinance did, when adopted, authorize parks and open spaces in all zoning jurisdictions in the town. The 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 distinction is that, that half this park, the park, the the portion on the other side of forty um, where the ball fields are, is zoned OI six. So to make this consistent with the existing, with the, with the rest of the park, we have recommended that it be all OI6. We, we have, if you'll recall in the past, we've uh, defined the entire park, at the time we called it Rec Park, now, we, now the, the entire park is defined as Veterans Park, um, but, but we do include the community garden, the greenway, disc golf on that side of the park. That piece of property is also included as part of uh, uh, Veterans Park, and so this makes the property consistent with both those with that zoning jurisdiction. So that all the one the one park is under one zoning jurisdiction. And the reasoning, Matt, for wanting to change it to TR four, it didn't change the TR, but to change it from TR four from TR four to OI six is. Will is you explain that to us again? It, to keep it consistent with the with the existing park, so that uh, it, it's the same as as the park under the interstate, so we would keep it. And the, are there things that we can't do over there now that the recreation department wants to do without it being rezoned? Not without it, not without it being, re, not without it being rezoned now. We, we, but it's not, it's not a residential um, piece of property. So the, the uses that you're, the uses that, that, uh, that, that, um, that, that align with the park are consistent with well, now they're consistent, as of the first public hearing, with every with every zoning jurisdiction. But they're consistent with OI six two, and that is and that's what the other parcel is. So to keep it in alignment with the uh, existing park, that was a recommendation to make it all one zoning jurisdiction. The only thing that I thought I had heard mentioned that was being planned <coughs> that we could not do if it, if that piece of property were not rezoned was the outdoor kitchen and greenhouse greenhouse but now with the passing of the first public hearing you can, those things could be done i'm not sure about the outdoor i'm not sure about the outdoor kitchen uh, we may have to take a look at, at, at an outdoor at an outdoor kitchen that that's kind of been pushed on the back burner a little bit anyway because we've had some uh, some grants we've applied for that did not include the outdoor kitchen but but you are but you but your community garden will be i mean you, you will be in compliance now you just won't be in you, you won't be consistent with your existing but we could go ahead now and put a greenhouse there if we if we wish. I mean, you could do an outdoor thing prior you could do to this to this discussion right now. Yes, you could do an outdoor structure because of, because of the 
first public hearing, we can now put it in. Yes, you can do you can do an outdoor structure of the community garden. Yes. Because consistency really doesn't make any difference if you can do it's a park now anyway. You can do what you want to do. Yes. Well, you can do what you want to do as a yeah, as a as a park. Um, if it's important to you that, that it's consistent with the additional zoning or other opportunities, then, then you will need to change the zoning jurisdiction. Consistency is not important if it doesn't accomplish a practical goal. What this and, and we have and we have we have people who have objected. So you know, but what are we accomplishing? So it's a question. Why? Well, obviously, we have to. We have a public hearing. Yes, I think so. We have to deal with it. But that, I, that is the question. I mean, <laughs> well, let's do this. Let's, let's go ahead, ahead and, and we'll we can debate this after the public hearing mm -hmm. when we talk. But we will, I, do. I have a motion now to open up a public hearing to discuss rezoning uh, the park from TR four to office and institutional. May I have a question? What if we just as a matter of procedure, if we do not vote to open up the public hearing? Um, be, in that case, you won't be able to entertain a motion to adopt the order. Mm -hmm. So we. So, you don't so the up. best procedure, I think, would be. I'll make the motion to open the public hearing. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Public hearing is open, and I know there'll be a stampede now. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, if Sheridan has a video, if I could. Okay. And how long is that? It's three minutes. Three minutes. I just wanted to bring everybody to the to the area. Uh, up close and personal, I just made video basically 24 hours on Blue Ridge Road and White Pine to show you pedestrians, bicyclists. I literally went out three times, but the video is three minutes long and it shows the intersections. And well, when just, you when you get ready, then if we I can do it. it now. You want to do it well, first? Why don't, or why don't we let that? I mean, let, she's let's let, okay. okay. She's ready to go. And again, my name is Sue Cuff, and I live at Seven Treetop Place in Black Mountain. And um, so I just basically uh, wanted to read my statement, I guess. When, when you vote whether or not you are going to rezone this property, I want you to please consider what the property owners, the current residents, and the taxpayers there, um, and how this could affect them. And my point was, that at first you may think you're only bringing you're bringing consistency with Veterans Park. However, changing that zoning is inconsistent with all of the rest of the property south of I-40, which is all TR4 residential. The property that you have north of I-40 is not surrounded by residential property. So if you want consistency, maybe that should be rezoned to TR4, if that's the, the, the desire to have consistency. Um, because, you know, tax pay, that is going to open up that property, if you rezone it to OI6, to um, breweries, bars, restaurants, daycare centers, and I think it would be a shame to lose that green space. Um, so, you know, the current roads that exist, the current traffic patterns, public safety do not support changing that zoning. So I've asked that you consider those factors when you decide to vote on this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, is it Campbell? Yes, sir. My name is Campbell Cawthon. I live at Seven Treetop Place. Uh, I'm a retired respiratory therapist. I've worked 30 years in trauma centers, and I would like to address public safety at the intersection of White Pine Drive, Assembly Road, and Blue Ridge Road. But first, I would like to thank you, each of you, for your service to Black Mountain community. I realize rezoning is a very difficult and complicated task, and I hope, to, hope each of you are carefully considering that rezoning the Garden Park may change the quality of life for our Black Mountain residents as well as the future growth of Black Mountain. I'm appealing to your good judgment and concerns regarding public safety and the potential traffic hazards of our residents, our out-of-town visitors, gardeners, school children, bicyclists, mail handlers, 
and to our first responders should White Pine Drive be the only access road into and out of a 10 acre section of the Garden Park slated to be rezoned uh, OI6. Please consider the potential risks when driving east on Blue Ridge Road as the road narrows, curving around and up the hill into the five-way Blue Ridge Road, White Pine Drive, and Assembly Road intersection. Should the 10-acre section of the Garden Park be rezoned to OI6, future permit by right developments, this park will increase traffic flow and the risk of traffic accidents at this five-lane intersection. This intersection is critical for fire trucks and first responders to have immediate access when called during emergencies. White Pine Drive should remain open and unencumbered as possible for the public welfare now and in the future. I strongly suggest that the North Carolina Department of Transportation is first consulted regarding public safety, traffic safety, because this rezoning decisions are made by this Board of Aldermen. Rezoning the Garden Park of OI6 also creates future conflicts by injecting permits by rights use, which could be incorporated with neighborhoods and existing infrastructures. Bars, restaurants, breweries, daycare centers, and other high traffic generators would create increased traffic delays and potential accidents if White Pine Drive is the only access into and out of the Garden Park. There is currently available land that would be safe for high traffic generators in Black Mountain. I recently spoke to an Ingalls manager who said businesses that do not compete with theirs, such as a daycare center, would be welcome to build on the vacant property across from the Ingalls Superstore. In closing, the proposal to rezone the existing TR4 quality residential high value community with open spaces that also provide safe fire and rescue support to our community using White Pine Drive would de decrease the quality of life for the residents living in White Pine community. Our Black Mountain public land and parks will become even more cherished and valuable as increased development and time moves forward. Thank you for seriously considering my statement. Thank you, Campbell. Okay. Next up is Marsha Loda. Hello, I'm Dr. Marsha Loda, um, 514 Blue Ridge Road in Black Mountain, and I am standing up for those of you who can't see me. Um, I'm really confused about all this, but I have um, studied it as best I can, and I'm going to read my statement, and please take it in the spirit and with the information that I constructed it with. I want to speak with you for a few minutes about if-then thinking, which is a segment of logic that helps leaders make good decisions by taking in the facts that they know and then projecting future consequences. If the aldermen want to rezone, I, I'm calling it Gray Eagle, I don't know what everybody else is calling it, to be consistent with the Veterans Park master plan, that's a logical decision that benefits the citizens of Black Mountain. But if the purpose of rezoning is to allow for a high profit, high traffic business, such as a daycare center, that is not a logical decision that leaders would make, and let's see why. A daycare center is not only high traffic, it is high concentrated traffic. Easily 150 cars in the morning before work, another 150 cars in the afternoon after work. If these counts are true and there's no reason to doubt them, then you add in the curves and the narrowness, and White Pine and Blue Ridge Road are logically not equipped to safely handle this traffic. It would be a tragedy waiting to happen. So logical reason number one, it's not safe. It's putting lives at risk. A little more if then thinking about parkland. Parks are designated as such so that they won't be intruded upon. 
Parks are sacred spaces that belong to the people. We need more of them, not less. If the city wants to promote a new daycare center, put it somewhere else. Nowhere else to put it, you say? It must go in the park? I bet New York leaders heard that a million times about Central Park. It takes guts and vision to say no, but that's how leaders leave their greatest legacy. If you will turn even part of the Gray Eagle Park into business, what's next? Lake Tomahawk? Selling out the golf course? Why should we think otherwise? In summary, it's logical to rezone the Gray Eagle Park to be consistent with the Veteran Park Master Plan. You will be leaving a proud legacy for yourselves and for this unique city. But the Veterans Park Master Plan does not allow for daycare centers. For that reason, and because roads cannot safely handle the projected traffic, a daycare center is not logical for the Gray Eagle location. If you vote to allow such things to happen, knowing the consequences we are on record sharing with you tonight, you are planning for a tragedy. When lives are lost from a traffic accident or from a slowed emergency response, you, the Board of Aldermen, will be at least ethically responsible. Be heroes instead. This is parkland for the people, for the gardeners, the disc golfers, the bikers, the runners, me, the little putter. So please support that. Thank you, Thank you Doctor. Next up, Robert Chamont. Thank you. My name is uh, Bob Chamonic. I currently reside off of Laurel. Uh, Laurel Lane on uh, 29 Woodman Lane. And first of all, I'd like to thank you for your service uh, to the community. I know it's a difficult job. We've had a lot of eloquent statements about uh, safety and some of the things that would impact this particular area of, of uh, Black Mountain. So I'm going to change up a little bit about what I'm going to say. And I will say that I do have experience on a board of directors. We built 21 schools, $3 billion worth of uh, capital projects, and a lot of those we're in the very same situation in my past life as what we're dealing with here. And the problems that have been brought up tonight of traffic and safety are certainly one of the biggest ones that we'll face with this decision. And by the way, growth is coming to Black Mountain. This is our litmus test. This is the first time. And how we do this, and whether we do it right or not, is going to impact this community. And certainly, we don't want to turn in to some of the communities that simply uh, uh, let growth go unabated and this certainly has that uh, impact so what i would suggest to all of you tonight is that the public here needs more information about this project we need more public hearings and especially in the blue ridge area but the blue ridge corridor and i will quote one of the councilmen at one of the public meetings that i attended on the new road that's going in hundreds of homes are going to be going in that area along with businesses on top of this proposed daycare facility that possibly could go in here. Bring it to us, show us the plan in a clear way, hold public meetings, meetings like we did on the Blue Ridge Parkway a few months ago, and get some public input. One other thing I'd like to say that hasn't been said, in order to successfully pull this off, you're going to have to condemn or use eminent domain with private homes. There's no way that the road that goes in where our fire station is, that does hundreds of calls per year will be able to make that the, the entry point. It'll have to come someplace else. And so somebody's home will have to be sacrificed. So before you make this decision tonight, you have to consider that also, the use of eminent domain and the impact that it will have on hundreds of families in our part of the community. So please, in the end, let's do the right thing. Let's table it and let's get out in the communities and see how the communities feel about it. But also, let's sit down and make sure that we plan for the future and those hundreds and thousands of cars. And by the way, there's going to be an exchange going in in that same area on top of this, if you weren't aware of that, on and off ramps, on top of everything else. Let's do it the right way. 
and let's use smart growth principles to make sure that lane doesn't turn into the I-40 Blue Ridge uh, bypass because that's the potential that we have right now with the number of traffic that will be coming through. Thank you and have a great evening and thank you for your time. Thank you, Bob. Jillian Ballard. Jillian Ballard, 97 Taylor Street. Um, I'm also a member of the Zoning Board of Adjustment for Black Mountain. Um, contrary to all these fine people, I just wanted to give you guys an extra vote of encouragement that because of the first public hearing today, what you all passed means that making all of the park the same zoning ordinance, whether it's TR4 or OI6, means that you can have a park either way. And so what you guys are deciding today doesn't have a, bear a lot of bearing on what most of these people are saying. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Sheridan Hill. It was just that she wanted to show the video. That was all. That's fine. That's. And I apologize for being out of hand. For... No, it was fine. There's not a lot of sounds, just yeah, so everyone yeah, knows. There's no sound for the video. Some questions. What they have in Cheshire would be what we would need because we have so many people walking uh, on Blue Ridge Road. And we just happen to be a rep here at Highway 9 at Blue Ridge Road. Which... Sure, please stand up there so that this can oh, get sorry. on the tape. Okay, well, that's it. That's fine. I didn't capture a lot of them, but there are lots of joggers, lots of bicyclists along Blue Ridge Road all day long and at night. Teenagers throwing basketballs down the road. When you park uh, at the community garden, of course, you're looking out over the horse pasture, and this is White Pine. This is White Pine Drive. There's a lot of delicate biodiversity in the area. Uh, when you first come down White Pine and park, there's several old growth trees, very large transformers over. Uh, the rezoning does involve a lot of development that will happen in the area. So I just wanted you to see up close and personal the beauty of this land. It's also extremely close to I 40. What is going to keep children in the daycare center out of the highway? Is it going to be something hideous? You know, what's going to really keep people out of the interstate? This is the discourse where the daycare center would actually be put. So part of this would become uh, uh, impervious <coughs> surface, parking lot, etc. And at the very downward slope of the area, um, well, people use White Pine Road, of course, to walk under I-40 to connect to Black Mountain. So highways divide, bisect towns in a real tragic way, and this is the one section that allows people on this side of town to not be completely separated from town. The river is directly below the proposed development, and so it's just that when you look at a map, a river is a line on a paper, and I just wanted you to see how visual this is, the river is flowing downhill from whatever is going to be developed above hill. If there are going to be parking lots, there will be antifreeze, oil, gas, runoff. Where, where is that going to go? What's going to keep that out of the community garden and out of the river? And this is the area that would be uh, become developed. A little shot of the community garden. It's just a very, very, it's really one of the prettiest areas in town. Very peaceful. And this is just a long shot. This is what it looks like now. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. <clears throat> Yeah. 
Next up, uh, Lee Reddy. If you'll allow me to use my second uh, opportunity at the mic to uh, tell a story. Um, I didn't write something down as eloquent as what we've already heard, but I, I, uh, I, I again, am calling on you to use your best judgment and consider future implications of the decisions you make today and going forward. So this story just goes back to the early 1990s. Um, my home is on North Park Lane. Um, some of you may be familiar with South Park Lane where it intersects with, um, Jennifer, help me out, the street. Oh, no, uh, above Oakland. Jennifer. Oakland. Oakland. Uh, Oakland. There's an intersection, it's a, and it it's, doesn't get much through traffic, thankfully, but when I bought my house in 1986, the town owned the land that was a pocket park and a protected wetland and spring from that intersection all the way down to Lake Tomahawk. And everybody knows the challenges we face with stormwater runoff and sedimentation in Lake Tomahawk. One of the significant contributors today is because in the early 1990s, the town manager and the alderman allowed that strip of land to be sold to a private developer. So now any, I invite anyone to drive up South Park Lane today, and you'll see at the upper end, nine apartments with a large parking lot, 18 cars, impervious. And then at the bottom of that wetland, there's four large townhouses. Did, probably not many people realize that was town-owned land three decades ago. A park, a wetland buffer, gone forever. Those are the very serious implications of decisions that you all are charged to make. So, Please be mindful of what we have today, and Sheridan's beautiful video helps capture visually what, what we have, what a, a, a tremendous asset the town has with this, this tract of land in question. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Shannon? Okay. Norman? been deputized by my wife <laughs> to speak. Uh, I'm Shannon's husband. I live at Three Treetop Place. Uh, Your name is? Norvin Norman. Dickerson. Thank you. Um, it seems to me we aren't talking about the things we ought to be talking about, and that is the daycare center. Everybody's talking around that. And I have questions. Has the town made a commitment to get that new industry into town that it will build a daycare center? Who's going to fund that daycare center? Is this a commitment that the town has made? We ought to know about it. And that ought to be out in the public before you folks decide what you're going to do. Uh, I, I can sit up here and propose other places for you to go. A good one is right below Lake Tomahawk. On those tennis courts, there are old tennis courts. Bill there, the traffic pattern is better. And then bring the tennis courts out to the Veterans Park. You got plenty of land. So there are so many better plans here. And other people have suggested that. Now, in a former life, I did zoning practice as a lawyer. To me, this makes no sense whatsoever. You just don't put something like this in a place where there are residences and where there's a park. Uh, in Charlotte, I represented Mecklenburg County I represented homeowners where somebody tried to come in and do something that was totally inconsistent with the neighborhood. So I know what that's like. And I just don't see this one as something you folks 
ought to vote for. And uh, I, I guess one of the things I did for the county was I expanded landfills in residential areas. And uh, the county of Mecklenburg had the guts to say, this is the last time we do it to you folks. I think here, I, Mayor, you live on this area. I see you running down all the time, uh, doing your jog. Uh, I go down that road quite a bit to get to places where I need to get to. It's a convenient shortcut. People have brought up the traffic problem in the future. I need not tell you folks what it's like. This is a bad idea. You've got so many other choices. Take one of those and do it. Thank you. Thank you, Norman. That's the last of the people that signed up, but it's a public hearing, so other folks may step up, even though you didn't sign, and we have a taker. Well, I would just reiterate that um, from a Greenway Commission point of view, we just feel like we don't have enough information. We don't know about the size or the footprint of the proposed facility and how it will up, uh, impact the greenways. And we would like to be included in any planning that is done in that area. Robin Josephs, 29, uh, the West Keesler. I recently went to a regional Greenway planning uh, symposium at the Arboretum where uh, a lot of national figures made a lot of statements about ways to encourage people to use and support greenways. They weren't particularly talking about building them or funding them, but ways to get people interested in using what they had, and ways to get people interested in building on the assets that they already have. And they made a couple of statements that were really interesting to me and I think have to do with zoning in general and this particular zoning in particular, that um, if you design around cars and around building, that's what you get. If you design around people and plants, that's what you get. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, you know, if you want surgery, go to a surgeon. <laughs> so that's your first thought uh, in zoning. The other is that, and I'm s sort of sensing this here, um, I lost my notes. Um, if you have fear of saying no to everything, you get the worst of everything. And if you um, say no to bad development, you wait and you get better development. You know, you can, we can take our time. And as, as, as has been said, when the green space is gone, it is gone, if not forever, for a very long time. It's really, really hard to reclaim it. I should also say I am a supporter of Children and Friends, which is a nonprofit daycare uh, organization that is doing tremendous work in our community. I send children there all the time. They deserve a fabulous, wonderful location in our community with access to our parks, with, with access to our greenway, with safe ins and outs. So please don't harden your hearts to Children and Friends. And um, let's see how we can all work together to build, to, and I'm not against development either, but we can build for people and we can build for our community rather than for development and for cars. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? If not, do I hear a motion to close the public hearing? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now, uh, if the board wishes, we can discuss some of this beforehand, or before a motion is made, if there is going to be a motion. I'm going to leave it up. I'd Go like ahead to, and speak. I'd like to clarify where we are because of the first public hearing mm -hmm. and, and having passed the first uh, you know the, the motion passed on the first public hearing and the comment was made earlier that um, irregardless of 
whether this motion passes, is made and passes or not. The, 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 and I, I would also clarify, which I, th I think everybody's aware of this, maybe some members of the board have seen any sort of presentation, plan, submission, request of the Board of Aldermen, but I haven't. So, so there's nothing on the table. There's no, we've not been asked. That the we this board has not been asked. Matt, has anyone approached you, given you a plan? There's no there's no plans. I mean, there's no um, you know there's there's yes yeah, there's no there's no plans that go that, that coincide with this. So a decision has not been made. We we've not been approached, and my understanding is. Well, what has been in the Black Mountain News, and I think it's fairly accurate, and I think it's, I think it's, I think it's fairly accurate, is that we would be approached to to lease land. That's my understanding, but we have not been. We have not been, and I would offer my personal, and this is not has nothing to do with what we're what's on the agenda tonight in this this particular public hearing I've not seen anything and nor do I have I, I, I have concerns many of the same that are expressed tonight but we have not been approached we have not been asked there's not been a formal request for anything so that's by the day by children by um, the daycare organization going doing business as children and friends I've seen nothing and Matt, there's no let me just say it this way there are no there are no plans that have been submitted to the town right. regarding the no, no formal request of the alderman this request and it really couples with the first one and one of our one of the speakers made the comment it's what I wanted to clarify is that regardless of how this vote goes that we, we could still be approached to do a land lease and then then I'd ask the town attorney and town manager if we were approached to do a land to to enter to make a request to to enter into a land lease can we do it irregardless of this motion of, of passing this motion passing this just, motion tonight? and I don't want to I don't want to run obviously let you let you speak I, all I would say is that with your first um, public hearing and the motion made there what you what you did was allow what, what what happened was open space and parks are now allowed in these zoning jurisdictions so in terms of what the how do i say this the, the right way in terms of the town needs in terms of <coughs> parks open space recreation uses those are now permitted in and i think i would say now they're permitted right as okay. of right now those are permitted uses in all the zoning jurisdictions that were listed. Now, um, that is that is un, or you may feel like it's unrelated, or may, you may not feel like it's unrelated. But but that is what that is what happened. You, <clears throat> those uses are now permitted in in this in the zoning jurisdiction as it currently stands. With, um, so, so, meaning, so the community garden is now a valid use inside the, inside right. TR. So so but that means that's what you were getting. It's at. residential. So I make sure I and you don't have to rezone it because it's a park because of the first order. Because now we've allowed that as a, as a, as an right. amendment to the land use code. Right. Um, it, it you know so it it um, so that so that change has already has already taken place now so that parks are permitted use in all the all zoning jurisdictions which is common in in uh, in towns because we, we want to to promote parks and recreation in a variety of zoning jurisdictions and so that is so yes so now that is, that is what that is what has happened that's all that's happened so far but yes that is the, the use of the community garden the greenway disc golf whatever your variety of uses are um, there and other pieces of property are now that are now um, in compliance with our land but then the other part of my question was if if we were approached to to enter into a um, lease agreement, land lease agreement with children and friends later on, would we would we then have to rezone in order for that to happen? I've 
Jennifer might be able to answer that quicker than me because I don't know what the permitted. I don't know that daycare is permitted or not permitted in the TR4. I don't know that there are or not permitted in the OI6, but that would be on your permitted use table. When you're we can, my understanding, and, and I don't want to put Jennifer on the spot here, but uh, because I know that Josh is the planning director has, has moved on. My understanding is that, that it would not be permitted. It's not a permitted use in TR4, it is a permitted use. If that's your specific issue, it's a permitted use in OI6, yeah. which is the zoning of the other piece of the property. But yes, it's a permitted use in OI6. But not which still TR4. does not mean that, that it, I mean, a future month and future board. I, I think what I um, do appreciate is that there's a lot of concern in the community. And there's concern, I think, you know, at least, at least on my part as well. And I do think that before we make a decision that, that whether we like it or not, the public does have a sense that we're moving in that direction, whether we are or not, and we're not really. But if you do, then um, I have a sense that it would be better to table this, this um, ordinance until we have, until there's some fruition and some, uh, and some definition to what we might be asked to, to do. So I would make a motion that we table. Okay. We have a motion on the floor to table this. Any discussion on this? I look at a couple of things. One being that, again, I think it's one of those situations where you're putting the cart before the horse. Um, we're hearing by way of citizens tonight about a daycare center. We haven't had any formal, you know, presentation by anyone associated with children and friends about a daycare center. So, you know, I think we're kind of, you're, you're kind of rushing, rushing the envelope there, so to speak. A um, couple of concerns, I mean, if by our first open, you know, our first um, citizen comment, I mean, our first um, open Ordinance. ordinance. <laughs> I'll get it out. Our first open ordinance sound like we've already accomplished what we set forth to do in this ordinance. We've already taken care of it. I mean, 17 White Pine Drive, that 10.1 acres, I mean, it, it, it falls under the um, designation as it now for the rest of the uh, park on the north side of an interstate, correct? It's not the same. It's a, okay, so there's two issues there. It's, it, 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 it is a distinct zone, it's a TR4 for the 10.1 acres that you just referenced, and the, I can't remember the acreage on the other side, maybe 17 or something like that, but uh, on the other uh, other side of the interstate, that is that is OI6. I think the issue that, that you pointed out is, un, under what you did in the first public hearing, under TR4, the community garden and the, and the, and, and the park amenities are now a, a uh, um, uh, they're in compliance with our land use code, but the but there are two separate zoning jurisdictions uh, uh, classifications for the piece of property. So, so if, if if the issue is building a greenhouse at the community garden, you're in you're you're in you're in compliance with that. If your issue is anything beyond that, then you're you know then you're not consistent with the piece with the with the other piece of property. You're not consistent with other uses. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we're doing tonight is we're just bringing everything into compliance and saying this is how we think it should be or how it ought to be. Certainly and the first thing, did that, yes sir. And anything beyond that, until it's presented to us, we can't act on, correct? We can't you, sit here tonight and you, say, okay, children and friends, you got a green light, you can go and build on that property. Um, no, no, that would, no, that would, you know, if you if you rezone the property to OI six, then you open up all the uses that are valid in the OI six jurisdiction, which I think people have pointed out. It might include, you know, it, it includes a variety of uh, of uses. It's office institutional. You can you know you can you can drive down past Highland Farms in that area and see what office institutional looks like. So so you open yourself up to those um, those those uses on the property that. You don't, and Ron, you're going to. I know you're looking at me like you're getting ready to reel me in here a little bit. But, <laughs> but you're not. You're not. You're not commit. You're not rezoning to OI6 doesn't commit you to anything, and it doesn't. But it also doesn't limit right. anything. And so I, 
So I, I don't. Right. I know so I'm not giving you the greatest information in the world, but I think right. that, that I think But that's what accurate. I'm getting at is just because we acted the way we act tonight does not say we're getting children and friends a carte blank to come in and put in a daycare, right? Neither, no. the, either way you vote does not do that. Right. That's, that's right. right. Neither, yeah, that's exactly right. right. Neither vote Plan B, uh, part B to that, is we heard a lot of comments tonight, a lot of concerns about safety in that intersection. Chief, could I call on you for a minute? Chief Jones? You, the only Chief Jones in here? Chief Jones, can you remember how many, if any, accidents have been at that intersection of White Pine and Blue Ridge, say within the last year or two? Uh, probably half a dozen. Half a dozen? Okay. That's just yes and that. Any, any difficulties as far as emergency vehicles coming out of that intersection? Uh, Responding to a call? No more than any other intersection. They're, they're all busy and there's blind spots there just like there are in other intersections in the town. Okay. Okay. Has there been any, now, Blue Ridge and White Pine, is that state maintained or town maintained, Blue Ridge? It's state. Blue Ridge is state maintained. Blue Ridge is state maintained. So if we looked at having a traffic study done for the purpose of maybe a traffic signal there or a four-way stop or something to that effect. The state would do that. We would have to ask the state to do a study. We'd have to reach out to the state. Okay. Would that be possible to do? I, I mean, yeah, it would, certainly be, it would certainly be possible to do to reach out to the state. I, um, they are um, taking a look at, um, you, you know, I think as, as Bobby pointed out, the, the, the interchange is the interchange is coming to that area, and so they are looking at that at that corridor. So I, I'll be frank with you; I'm not sure they would. I'm not sure they would do an independent study of that intersection without looking at a comprehensive study of the entire um, corridor, which we have, uh, which is part of uh, the transportation improvement plan that is going to the the the, uh, the state process currently. So, so, with that, so, with that. I, so I don't. So I. So I don't think. I don't think it'd be limited to that. I think it'd be a much broader. Uh, uh, a review. So with that intersection coming in there too, they probably study the current location of children and friends too, wouldn't they? They don't. No, sir. Not in that. I mean, not in that, Not unless the board. Not unless that was a. I mean, they would. If, uh, I mean, from their perspective. Right now. From their perspective. If the if the if that if that is if the they will look at. I don't want to speak for for DOT here, but what they generally look at, I think, is. Um, uh, Development that's already in a, in, in a pipeline that's, that's that's going to come, so they can or or developable land, so so they may so they may look at it in that regard, but not. I don't think it would be specific to any uh, any group, um, except that you may you know you may say you, they they may look at, uh, at at development in general along that corridor, but not but not specific. Because with the addition of the new plant coming in, you're going to have a lot of traffic coming from either direction. And whether a children's and friend is in their current location or if they move somewhere on Blue Ridge Road, it's still going to be an issue of a high volume traffic. Well, there, yeah, there's no question that, uh, that yes, I think that's I think that's accurate. The traffic is uh, um, going to increase with the interchange and the increase in the industry. And just and just um, because I heard this mentioned, and I don't want to speak out of turn here, but there's no there's no arrangements with. Uh, with the commerce park or the new industry regarding uh, in, any uh, any incentives from the town of Black Mountain, just and none related to, to this issue tonight or other issues. There, those those don't exist. I I just want to make that clear. I, I appreciate you doing that because that was one of the things I wanted to highlight. On there, there should be no conspiracy theories when it comes to that. Right. We, we that's not even in the city limits of Black Mountain. We, we're you know we're glad that you're coming because it's going to mean jobs for, for the folks here in town. But there's there's no no backroom deals to get, to get them in here. That was done through the county managers as far as the discussions and all that sort of thing. This board was told that they were coming. We didn't have anything, and we had no no promises made, no nothing. Uh. As far as I want to discuss, you know, some of the things that they were talking about, Blue Ridge Road. 
we already know Blue Ridge Road's a problem, guys. That Blue Ridge Road is one of going to be the fastest growing areas, as I've told Bob when when we had a meeting with the planning board. It's coming. Mm -hmm. There's the vacant pasture land that is down through on Blue Ridge Road and down on South Blue Ridge Road is eventually going to be full of houses. It is coming. Now the board knows it's coming. And you can't stop somebody from selling their piece of property and developers from, from buying property and developing it into residential houses because there's a need for it. That's the point, residential. Residential, not but, institutional and okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. We are, uh, Larry Harris, Ryan Stone, two members of our board are working with the MPO. We, we're, we're trying to, to discuss and talk with them about widening Blue Ridge Road, like the new part that comes from number nine to where the intersection is, the two pastures. We're looking at the, the hopefully the, the partnership with them about putting a sidewalk in all the way from number nine, all the way down around to, to, to where the interstate is. We know it's coming, and we're working on it, guys. It's th this, this motion that we have right now has nothing to do with discussion of a daycare or any development. We're just making both sides of our part the same designation. If, when it gets time for somebody coming to, to us to talk about children or friends or anything like that, then we have a discussion about the safety issues and all that sort of thing. You guys are already assuming that, that it's a done deal. It's, it's not. We have to discuss it, we have to talk about it, and we have to plan, plan and there is gonna be plans that, that would have to be done for anything. Uh, so that's basically all I want to say. Okay, we've got the, Maggie, do you have anything that you want to no, add? No, I'm pretty much in agreement with um, what Don's saying. I see this as a big time planning situation, and I think it's already underway in different areas, and we will all, all phases of it will have to come together. And, uh, it sort of gives you a panicked feeling sometimes when you see these, you pick one little situation and, and deal with it, but it, it's bigger than that. And I think uh, I have a lot of faith and trust in our um, setup that we have with the people we have here working with and with the MPO. I think, I think there's some good possibilities and I think it can be worked out for whatever we, we don't know. I mean, there's a lot of unknowns right now. Mayor, you asked for a motion. I know we've got, uh, no, we got a motion, motion on, on the board. board. Yeah, no, we have to deal with that one uh, first. And before we do that, I want to make a couple comments. I don't vote, but I do want to make a couple comments that, like Don says, this is not a done deal. However, I would be remiss to say that I have not heard anything about a daycare center. There has not been any formal request. Matt, Larry is exactly correct. And so, but I have heard about this. This is, there is talk about this. Um, having this first issue dealt with, that is the first public, public hearing, time is not of the essence. Mm -hmm. Time is not of the essence for us to have to pass something like this. Uh, I'm, I'm, for one thing, I'm not a fan of, of widening Blue Ridge Road anyway. I realize that somewhere down the line it may have to come. I mean, that's just that's just progress. That's just the way things are. But I think though that this is that this is an issue that we we meaning the board here has been looking at a consistency. And I've yet to hear anything that says now we can't do something at that park under TR4 with this first public hearing passage that we couldn't do before. So I don't know why we would need to move in that direction quickly 
to get this done. I think it needs to be studied some more. And having said that, I will then, the motion is on the floor and I'll to table this. And so I will say all in favor of tabling it, please Aye. vote. Aye. All those opposed to tabling it, vote. Aye. All right, the motion is voted down. So we are now back to basically if someone wishes to make a motion to rezone it, they need to do so. I'll move. All right. All those in favor? Is there more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So it's passed 4-0. Need to adopt a statement of consistency. Motion. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, no. All right. Communication from staff. For once, I do have something. Uh, and the folks out there who are interested in greenways and parks, uh, timing is excellent for me. I'll be the good guy tonight. As most of you know, a lot of you knew Mary Hemphill and knew Joe. You know, they put a lot of their life and their money into buying up properties and put them into conservation easements. They also all bought a piece of property behind where they lived, off of 70, uh, always known to me as the Sims property, although it's obviously now part of the Hemphill property. It's about 26 acres. Mary, in her will, left that to the Appalachian Conservancy on the condition that the Conservancy could have it if it could be developed for the use by the town as a park. And that not being enough for Mary, she left the houses in front of it to be sold to create the seed money to turn that property into a park. Although no official action has been taken, this board is, based by consensus, I express their interest in moving forward on that offer and proposal, and I will be communicating that to Conservancy and the, the estate over the next few days. But that's what Mary did with her last few dollars, is uh, give you another big chunk of park that you want. I don't have anything nearly as I don't have anything nearly as glamorous as that. I would uh, remind the board that uh, next Monday night, June nineteenth, you have your budget, uh, your public hearing regarding the budget at six o'clock in this room. And I would point out that uh, the Lakeview Center has um, been recertified as a senior center of excellence. It uh, received the, the highest marks with no recommendation for improvement, and it has been asked to be a model for other groups that are trying to attain the certification. So I am proud of. Uh, the Lakeview Center and the staff there, and I hope that you will uh, um, keep them uh, in mind when you're uh, when you're when, when you are having events. But uh, but the important thing is the budget hearing next month. And Six. that's at what time? Six o'clock, right here. Yes, sir. Anyone else? I call the meeting adjourned.